In this tutorial, we're going to do one of the last things that you're always going to be doing with InDesign, and that is dealing with images and text wrapping. So I'm going to go to a new section of my document. I'm going to create a frame, a text frame, and I'm going to make sure that my object style is set to the basic graphics or basic text frame. And I'm going to fill this with some placeholder text. And I'm also going to give it a few little columns, just because isn't it nice when we have multiple columns. Now, I have not gone to a 12 column grid system set up here, even though that's what I really should be doing. So maybe I'll just go ahead and add those, just because it really is important that we have those columns set up for our design. It's just kind of annoying when we're looking at this, so I may go to preview mode just to make that sound look a little bit different. Now, the very first thing, and I'm going to go to preview mode just to make this easier, is inserting an image. To do that, we typically don't want to copy and paste, but we want to go to file and place. Now, we'll find our pictures, of course, in the folders that we've created, so I may go to um, the local C drive, stock art, which on all of your computers exists, and I may uh, apply a photo. And so one of the things I wanted to point out is the different image for file formats. A typical image file format that you would use for print is a TIFF image. This means tagged image format. And this is the, the image format that you typically see in the graphic design industry. Of course, we can use JPEGs. The problem with JPEGs is they're generally more compressed than the TIFF files are. And so you're not guaranteed of the quality um, that you're guaranteed of with a TIFF image. So just be aware of that for the future. Anyway, I'm going to use a JPEG image because it doesn't really matter what type of image I use. However, this matters a great deal what I'm about to show you. If I select this image, and this says 640 by 428 um, pixels, it's just showing me what the pixel dimensions are. If I click on open and place that image, you'll notice that image came in really, really large. But I know that 640 by 480 pixels is not a very large image. Now, the reason this image is coming in large is because it's set to 72 dots per inch, which is something that I know by experience. So we need to go find that image and actually set it to what we need it to be. So I'm going to go to Stock Art, Stock Illustrator Stock Photos, and find that image right here. I'll double click on it just to load that in the window by itself. And I'm going to go to my image resize. And you'll notice that the units right now are set to 100 pixels per inch. I'm going to set this to keep the print size. Actually, I'm not going to resample it. I'm going to change that to 300. There we go. So now that I've changed that to 300, I've clicked off the resample. It's changing my print size width and height so it's correct. And now I can save this document. I'm going to save it on the desktop just so it's easy to get to. I'll even put it in the video tutorials folder where I'm currently working. And this is that image at 300 dots per inch. And now I'm going to go back to InDesign. And I'm going to do a new place. So File, Place, go back to my file and find that 300 dot per inch image and notice this time it comes in at the correct size. So it is very very important that you have changed your print size on your documents so that you are getting a pretty good estimation of what its actual print size is. At 300 dots per inch that's what the size of this image is. It's tiny! At 72 dots per inch that's the size that it looks like. And that gives you a really, really false impression of the size that you can use it in your document. So be aware that you do not want to have documents that are placed at 72 dots per inch. You want to have them placed at 300. Now, you can scale things up a little bit. Um, if As long as you have about 300 dots per inch, I mean 150 dots per inch for your print, it's going to look decent. Now, now that I have this image in here, I need to take a look at what's going on. 
This is an image that's placed inside of a frame. The frame is not the same thing as the image. The image is actually inside the frame. So if I click and drag on the frame, you'll notice that all it does is change the size of the frame, not change the size of the image. Of course, you can move both of them together, but I can actually click and drag my frame out to the left, and the image stays just where it is. And that can be one of those really confusing things at first. Now, if you are trying to get your image to scale with the frame, then you can hold down the Alt key. Um, let's see, is it the Alt and Shift key or just the, oh, the Control key. If you hold down the con Control key by itself, you can actually scale your image and your frame at the same time. But be aware that, of course, if I don't hold down the Shift key, it will, um, it will change the frame in non-constraining ways and that of course will alter the constraining of your image which looks kind of awkward. Now there used to be a great feature in InDesign CS3 and stuff which would easily enable me to make my image fit to my um, frame immediately and that that feature seems to be missing. There may be something in here somewhere where I can make this thing automatically fit, but I am not really sure where that is. Ah, here it is, fitting. So um, fitting, fit content to frame, and you'll see that scales up that content. Or let's try fitting, center the content. It's not going to work since it's already been changed, so I'm going to make it small again by undoing it with Control Z. Now I'll do fitting, right click and choose center content and so you'll see that I can use my object styles and make the frame a certain color and the content within that frame will still be placed right there in the middle um, and if as I drag my box around I'll need to right click and choose fitting center content in order to get that content to go back in the middle now what if I want to make um, manual changes to where this image is I can actually go to the white arrow and click on that object inside and be able to make changes to that object inside, which is really kind of cool. You can even go to ob tools like the Rotate tool and rotate the object inside the frame as needed. So it's really powerful with what you can do with both the white arrow and the black arrow together. You just have to always be aware that the black arrow will edit the frame on the outside only whereas the white arrow will edit the content inside the frame. And of course you can also edit the individual shape of your object, of your frame object. So that's kind of wild. Now you'll notice that I have a really non-traditional frame here, which is kind of wild. I'm going to move that up just so it alters it just a little bit. It cuts the image just right. Now um, one of the things that I'm also going to want to do is use um, my um, wraparound. So that's easily easy to use. Over here on the top right you can see that right now it's not set. Then I can click on that one. It will wrap to the object or or let's say the, the bounding box of the object that I have or it can kind of fit to the object a little bit better. And You'll see now it is actually wrapping around the object on that corner but what we're going to need to do is offset it a little bit. So that's why we need to know where the um, window text wrap is so that we can offset that from the edge just what we need to, in order to make that work. So there's something about text wrapping and I should point out one last thing about text wrapping. If Let's say that you have something that you don't want to wrap around something. So if that does happen, then you need to right click on that text frame and choose ignore text wrap so that you can actually put that text on top of whatever object it is that you are trying to have it work with. So um, that way you can use text wrapping or not on individual text frames. So anyway, that should conclude this and let me know if you have any questions. There's a lot more to explore but I think you can do that on your own. So thanks.